Hey everyone, this is John from motionworks.net back with a short tutorial for you. This is just a, a quick workflow as I currently know it for getting textures from Substance Painter across to Cinema 4D via Redshift. Now, I've done this only once before and I was actually helped by Serge Step. Serge follows me and I follow him on Twitter and um, Serge gave me the, um, the workflow a little while ago when I was working on that stone um, stone lantern and uh, I'd actually since forgotten I'd written a few written a few notes but um, I'd forgotten most of it so I thought I'd get it down on video and um, I can use that in the future to remind myself and also hopefully help you and if you see anything that I could be doing better or any better way we could improve this workflow just let me know and um, we'll continue to refine it but definitely um, you know, follow Sturge on Twitter. You can also find his stuff on, um, on Vimeo as well. So here in Substance Painter, I had everything set up and uh, the next step was to export the textures. So to do that, I just chose File, Export Textures. And this is a kind of a confronting dialog box. You can see under configuration, it looks a bit confusing. I'm using the latest version of Substance Painter. I subscribe and uh, inside that there is a Redshift option but this is using a glossiness workflow and um, I'm using the PBR metal rough workflow. So in order to get that preset, rather than making it, um, setting it up manually here, I actually imported it. And that's the same preset that's used for Maya. And you can find that uh, at this link here. I'll give you the link in the, in the post. And here you can click on updated Redshift export preset, which is what I did. And uh, I uh, imported that into my shelf and that became available here in the presets. What I've also done is I've added ambient occlusion as well um, and uh, I'm using that version. But once you've got that set up, you'd come across to export and you'd choose that one or the one you want to use from the configuration list. And uh, you can see if I twirl down this um, dial base, there's all of the textures that are going to be exported. So they all get their own textures. Now each of these objects is um, a texture set inside of Substance Painter. And um, when I open up this, uh, the original um, file that I unwrapped in 3D Coat and exported as an FBX inside of Cinema 4D, each of the textures uh, has the same name as these objects and they're all already applied. So all I have to do is go into Cinema 4D, import the textures through Redshift and everything is going to look good. So next was to click export. I'm going to cancel that and come across to Cinema 4D. And here in Cinema 4D, I'm actually going to just bring up the Redshift IPR and just going to dock that here and turn that on. You can see that's nice and quick. I'm using the HP Z840 workstation and I've got two uh, NVIDIA 1080 cards in it and you can see it's pretty, pretty quick, pretty nice. Excuse the birds in the background. Now. I use a different HDRI um, from the one I'm using here inside of Substance Painter. Here I'm using Grayscale Gorilla's HDRI link. And see if I launch the browser, I've got all of the different packs in here. And I recently got the Pro Metal Studios. I'm using one of these great Pro Metal Studios, which obviously is great when you're using Chrome and different kinds of metal. I'm going to close that up. So from here, what I have to do is bring in the textures. They've already been exported from Substance Painter. And you can see I've done most of them. I just left one here or a couple here that we could have a look at. First is this Nozzle C. And you can see here, that's there's the object there. I think it's this little part at the end here. Little gold section just here. And currently it doesn't have any textures. So I need to add those textures in. So I don't want to recreate the setup for um, each of these materials. So obviously it's better just to duplicate one of the ones that's already set up and then just switch out the materials. So I'll just grab this, um, the gun texture and control drag. I'll name this um, nozzle C. And I'm just going to alt drag that onto the nozzle C texture and that's going to replace that and add it to the object. Now obviously that's going to put the uh, gun texture on there, I've got to replace those materials. So the next thing to do is just double click it. That'll open up the material editor here for Redshift. And I need to click on 
edit shader graph. And that will open up the shader graph and you can see this is Espresso based. This, um, these nodes here, these are all texture nodes. You can find them under textures, this guy here. Just delete that one. So you can see for this one, I have diffuse color. And this one at the moment is the gun because remember we duplicated the, um, the gun material. So I'm going to just click and locate nozzle C, diffuse color, there's nozzle B. Nozzle C, diffuse color, and click open. And nozzle C, roughness. And metallic. Just plug these materials in. Nozzle C, where is it? Nozzle C, metallic. and also the normal map under general nozzle C normal now there also is an ambient occlusion node I've got that switched off at the moment I'm still a little bit unsure about the best workflow for ambient occlusion I did actually export the ambient occlusion texture let's just grab I think I grabbed one of these guys and I'm not sure if it's out color. Someone can actually show me the best workflow for this one. I'd much appreciate it. But if I click on that and click on here, you can see for nozzle C, it actually is an ambient occlusion texture. Now, interestingly, some of them, like for the gun, for example, everything came out black and I'm not sure why. So I don't know whether that's a bug or something to do with the chrome material. If anyone can shed some light on that, that'd be great. You can see nozzle B is black. But most of the other ambient occlusions all come out as you'd expect. So I'm going to click on, where is it, nozzle C. That screws, there we go, this one here. And click open. And just plug that into overall color. And I think that should probably work. But as I said, uh, I'm still a little unsure about this, um, this actual workflow. Um, and whether it's best to use the inbuilt ambient occlusion node or whether it's better to export from Substance Painter. So anyone who can shed some more light on this information on this would be great. Meantime, I'm just going to close that up. And that material should be good to go. So I should be able to see that material. Let me just turn back on my IPR. There we are. So that's exactly how it's supposed to look. So that's the basic workflow. And I did that for each of the different um, materials and uh, ended up with uh, something that looks very much like what it looked like in Substance Painter. Obviously it's a different um, HDRI, but it's uh, very quick, very straightforward. So if you have any more information, please let me know um, so we can refine this, um, this workflow. I'm still new to Redshift, so I'm still learning, um, but you can see it's very fast. And it's <laughs> for someone who's never really used, um, well, never used, uh, a third-party renderer before um, always had to uh, you know do my own sort of manual renders and previews using uh, Cinema 4D's tools this is very exciting so I'm definitely going to spend a lot more time in Redshift and uh, I know it's going to you know, improve my workflow but uh, hopefully that's been helpful grab the uh, the files that I leave links for and um, let's keep the dialogue open and uh, get this um, workflow really uh, pinned down for now, this is John from MotionWorks. Have fun, be creative, and I'll see you in another tutorial.